Hey, we're back. We just finished talking about Nintendo. Ooh. Yeah. And we are moving right into Square Enix, it's which a should lot be to take in. Yeah, they should be they should be starting momentarily. Of course, funny story about this was that Square initially scheduled their press conference at the same time that Nintendo's press conference. And happens. it was like, who is going to budge? Well, well, yeah, it was like either a game of chicken where yeah. no, where one person, one company is going to move or the other one's going to move, or people like. Kim and I have to figure out how we're going to cover two like major press events at one time. Yeah, that's no fun. Uh, yeah, which is which is kind of funny. Plus, let but. everybody watch and find out what they want. Don't yeah. make them choose. These yeah. are hard decisions. <laughs> but um, yeah, Square Square pushed ahead an hour. Square lost the game of chicken. So now uh, now they're following up Nintendo. Yeah. But really, that's the way it should be. Nintendo's had that Tuesday morning, that yeah. Tuesday morning first show slot for years and years. So, I mean. I think as long as I've been going to E3s, mm -hmm. uh, that's been the case. So that's that's the way it should be. Yeah. So cool. uh, I think the big thing to talk about uh, about with Square before it starts is was actually came out last night at Sony's yes. press conference, which after after years and years, they finally announced that like Final Fantasy VII, the remake, yeah, is a real thing. Like that is now happening. Not that it. They're finally not trolling. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly, right? exactly. Like, like like the time when they announced that Final Fantasy VII is coming to PS4 and then it was just like the PSN sort of... Like At PlayStation Experience, I remember that there's a kid in, uh, next to, sitting next to Hanson and me who are, yeah. before the show are like, what do you want to announce? And he's like, well, you know, I don't want, you know, I really want that Final Fantasy VII remake. And so as it was coming across the screen, you saw him and he was getting his camera ready, ready, ready. <laughs> and then it was just like... Oh, oh man it was so yeah that is so disappointing but yeah at least that's finally um out here i'm hoping what? they're gonna show us a new trailer but i don't know if it'll just be the same thing or if they're gonna discuss any more of that because we all said when we first saw that trailer we weren't sure what to make of it i remember like you're like is this uh like uh Seven two, you know. Yeah. Well, so the thing, the thing about they how they revealed it is they were like hinting that it was the Final Fantasy VII remake. But I'm as a big fan of that <laughs> of that original game. Even I kept wanting because like I knew that 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 digital version was supposed to be coming mm -hmm. out, and that so maybe it was an announcement about that or something. Mm -hmm. And then it seemed like with the trailer, it didn't hit any of those like super familiar landmarks like it didn't show you those they're characters they're trolling you again well a little bit except that like i'm like i i it's it's hard to explain but i i guess there's i'm sort of split in two directions because on one hand i am just overjoyed that mm -hmm. that is actually happening yep. and on the other hand i wish that they had crafted a more exciting trailer to really get you pumped up that it was happening because well it, maybe we're gonna get that here yeah or or some more info because i feel like it wasn't until remake flashed mm -hmm. up on the screen that i was like 100 percent sure that like that's what it is yeah, it's well, not it's not some it's not some weird side yeah. story again like that dumb dirge of cerberus or whatever yeah, you know, I know like that's it, your biggest fear is like oh please let this be please let it be but yeah yeah so i remember um, we got off the press conference like i don't even know if i've process that that is actually happening or had time to like sh get excited about it because we were just like sitting there waiting for our hopes to be dashed again and <laughs> it was like oh well, whoa this is real yeah because i mean square has kept the possibility of that remake open like anytime um like you know the series producer mm -hmm. producer uh, yoshinori katase gets gets asked about it it's mm -hmm. always like i would like to do that but boy it we'd have to wait until the right time we'd have to wait until we could assemble mm -hmm. that team and all that, and of course, with like Nomura working on all those different projects. Well, and let's bring that with up. With Sakaguchi not on, not at the company anymore. Do you uh, do you think we're gonna see? Are we gonna see any Kingdom Hearts? Is yes. that is that? Do you think we're gonna get trailer? I am used to having my hopes dashed, as we've discussed. Uh, I don't think it's gonna be here. I should say I've never seen anyone as excited as a press conference at a press conference as I was when. Square, what, like two years ago, revealed Kingdom Hearts 3. There's a vine she of was me going around. Literally jumping up and down and screaming in the Game Informer booth at E3. Big, big so, moment. Um, yeah, yeah. So are, are, so I guess the big question, if they show it, are we going to get you jumping up and down and screaming here in the studio? Yes, I promise. So <laughs> if they do, like, it, it's just, I can't even help it. I don't even realize, like, when I was dancing, if I, I, I never realized these things. I mean, I'm just, it's exciting. <laughs> But over that, like, 
maybe some a new trailer for Final Fantasy 15 I would think would be here. I feel like now they're really heavy into promoting 15 more, especially with the demo update that they just did yeah, and yeah. you know people have finally gotten hands on with it. Um, cuz I definitely think we're going to see Final Fantasy 15 before we see Kingdom Hearts obviously. I mean at this point. So um hopefully ugh, sorry, I'm getting like really close to my mic and eating <laughs> it. That's that's not what you do. Um I, but so, do you think cuz like I think it's important that they keep Final Fantasy 15 rolling also just because mm-hmm. okay so like the demo came out mm-hmm. an update to the demo I think that they're so aware that after like what almost a decade of mm-hmm. drawing out the development of what was you know originally versus 13 and then became Final Fantasy 15 I think that they're hyper aware about the skepticism surrounding mm-hmm. that game yeah. I mean Kim and I talked to talked to Tabata san about mm-hmm. that when we were in uh, Tokyo last year and uh, and I think part of this that they I think they sensed that a big frustration from the community mm-hmm. surrounding that game was just like their inability to communicate about it mm-hmm. is that they announced this game years and years ago and then like E three would come and go with no word and TGS would come and go yeah. with no word and people just want to know what's happening so I think I would not be surprised to get a trailer here today just to sort of reinforce. Oh, here we All go. Right. Here well, we go. Hopefully they start and with that. And we didn't forget the Western releases. Also, Deus Ex will probably be here and Tomb Raider, I would say. Whatever. Assume. You've got Kim and I here talking. It's going <laughs> to it's gonna be a lot of JRPG <laughs> talk also. To, uh, but Isabel, I'm excited about both those games. Well, I know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So we'll hand it over to uh, Square Enix here, but we'll we'll be sort of there we go. Just cause chatting three. a little bit here and there throughout. And be sure to stay tuned for afterwards because we're going to do a little like post-show analysis probably talk more about Final Fantasy also. Of course. Starting strong. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome CEO and Square Enix Americas and Europe, Phil Rogers. Good morning. Good morning, and for fans joining around the world, good afternoon and good evening, too. Welcome to the Square Enix E3 conference. We haven't done one of these for a while, so it's great to be here ahead of what we believe will be a remarkable next 12 months for us, for you, and for our industry as a whole. Just before we jump into the games, I'd like to take a moment or two to talk about the journey we've been on at Square Enix. Because I think, and I hope you agree, you've seen a difference in how we've been working. We've seen the massive work undertaken by the Final Fantasy XIV team in recreating their gaming world, right for the game and, of course, its players. We try to be more open-minded in how we support projects and teams whether it's things like helping the Just Cause 2 multiplayer mod or trusting the creators of Life is Strange in how characters and themes in games today can work. And we've been listening and taking on board feedback wherever we can, as you've seen with the recent Final Fantasy XV demo. And we're determined to continue listening and improving. So welcome. Great to have you here live in LA and fans joining via the streams online as we share more information about our upcoming titles. Over the next hour or so, the creators of our games, characters and worlds will be here to personally introduce you to their work and share the passion they have to make their game the next great game. Whether it's the dystopian future of Deus Ex Mankind Divided or the enduring legacy of Final Fantasy, Our talented teams and studios from around the world have an unforgettable experience for you. Now, we started the show, you had a quick look at Just Cause 3, one of the most explosive titles, literally, you're going to see this year. And one I know that will be played for a long time to come. I should point out, if you purchase Just Cause 3, it will not literally explode. Five years on, hundreds of thousands of gamers are still having fun each month playing with the game. This time, we promise to provide longer and stronger support for these games after release. And I personally see Just Cause standing side by side 
with our other iconic gaming worlds. I can't wait for you to get your hands on it later this year. It's an example of our belief that we work with some of the world's most talented teams to provide the platform and support to deliver on their creative visions. And I'm excited to report in its first year, our Square Enix Collective Initiative has supported new talent too. Getting our dedicated Square Enix community to support and vote on new games is just part of our ambition to involve you more in the work that we do and provide new routes into the industry for new development talent. I'm sure and I hope to see some of this talent headlining E3s in the future. Taking all these things together, we're proud that Square Enix today is unique in the industry in terms of the variety and depth of experiences we create, the global appeal of our games, and of course, our amazing fans. It's important to us, and I believe it's important to you too. Ultimately, we're privileged to entertain gamers across the globe, and we won't rest in our efforts to do just that. But that's enough from me. Mm -hmm. Thanks for listening. <laughs> Please enjoy the show. And now, I'd like to welcome Roland, my friend from Avalanche Studios, to give you more information about Just Cause 3. Thank you. Hey. Did he say Avalanche Studios? <laughs> Instead of Avalanche. Hi, everyone. I'm Roland Lesterlin, the game director on Just Cause 3. At Avalanche Studios, we pride ourselves on making huge open world games where players are free to do what they want, when they want, however they want. With Just Cause 3, our ambitions are only matched by the sheer scale of our worlds. We want to make it the greatest game in the franchise and once again redefine the open world genre by setting a new benchmark for action and destruction. I should point out this was a game and cover story. We strive to put sandbox style yeah. creativity and back into next gen games. It's I actually got With to that play. It's it pretty cool. We've added oh really? Tons of new was this at a pre E three event? All while yes. polishing and All improving right. on your favorites to just give you more of what you love. We've added the wingsuit and stabilized the parachute, giving players unparalleled freedom to soar throughout the open world, raining epic destruction from above. We've upgraded the grapple hook. We've added multiple grapple lines and the ability to directly control the grapple's tension. Man, that grapple hook vastly increasing the cascade is explosion. really something in this series. Short, and make people we want to give you all the tools you need to create hours and hours of incredible action in our Mediterranean-inspired world, Medici. I love how with all of the explosions, just that's what you focused in on. Mm -hmm. square mile the pranking. Sky to see that yep. action adventure is no small task, but it's one we've dedicated ourselves to delivering. And we're really pleased today to be able to announce that Just Cause 3 will be launching globally on December 1st this year on PlayStation 4, <sighs> Xbox One, me. and PC. All right. We can't wait to see all the amazing stunts and incredible action moments you'll create with the game when you get your hands on it. But for now, we want to show you what the new Just Cause is all about. So get ready. Check this. this. It's just cause cool. three. It's just going to be a montage of people slapping themselves in the forehead. It should be. That's what I would do. <laughs> you can make them kick themselves, too. It's great. <laughs> Statues, like dictators. Can make Square them Enix presents an Avalanche Studios production. Just Cause 3. I love it. I love it. Just Cause 3 is a huge open world game with over 400 square miles of complete freedom from sky to seabed with a large a arsenal of, of weapons, destructible material, gadgets, and yep. vehicles. Look Prepare at that. To unleash chaos the in bridge. the most creative and wow. explosive ways you can imagine. And a lot of the world sort of, Rico most of the world Rodriguez responds like that. Yeah, that's what's away. cool about it. Like, the everything is pretty much destructible. Like, you, to and the cool thing the is if you knock something down, like, there, so you could make his hand go into him, or you could take his Obsessed head around for power. a weapon. I mean, this game just has no boundaries, it feels like. Oh, wow. Suppressing his citizens, building huge military structures. Feels kind of like an and a evolution of what they were trying to do with um, mercenaries and playground of destruction back in the day. Last, last Di Rabello mm -hmm. has his eyes on much bigger things than just Medici. He sees global domination as his ultimate conquest. Rico, driven by the desire to return Medici to its once beautiful and peaceful past, goes about bringing down Di Ravello's armies and military bases by any means possible. There's a lot of fire in this trailer. 
Rico's tools of the trade include an updated grapple hook, which can be used anywhere in the world Sweet. to scale great heights as a weapon or for moments of awesome stunt action. <laughs> now players can deploy multiple grapple tubs, yeah. enabling what? Rico to chain together incredible moments of chaos and destruction. Combined with a new manual retract function, the grapple becomes even more powerful and versatile. Slingshot vehicles into checkpoints, yep. attach soldiers to exploding Look fuel tanks, cool <laughs> smash helicopters into the ground. <laughs> you can also hook onto objects and tear them apart and even construct wrecking balls. The possibilities are endless. All right. The all parachute right. is now a far more stable platform for combat, helping Rico strike his enemies with great precision using one or two-handed weapons. This allows the combination between the grapple and parachute to be a highly effective combat force. I wouldn't force. think shooting from a Something parachute no is how you get great do. precision in your gunplay. But That's what they've turned it into. On top of this, there's the, the all-new wingsuit, all wingsuit awesome which allows for total freedom of the skies and completes Rico's aerial ability. So is that like a Super Mario cape? Like a, like a gliding thing? Rico also carries yeah, a gliding. gun rack of machine guns. That's how you rifles, get out of situations handguns, fast. Grenades, so. rocket launchers, and unlimited C4. Oh, man. Unlimited C4? Yep. And awesome explosions. Look at that. Hold up. Medici's unlimited C4. Land, sea, and okay, air I'm... Vehicles. I mean, I was on board with this game before, oh. but there's some of the stuff I did not know. Trucks it's just awesome. Like, Each I... One modeled in incredible One of my detail. favorite things I saw at Pre-E3. Okay. are a complex set of hinged parts, crumple zones, <laughs> and explosive fuel tanks. <laughs> Buildings, bases, and gas stations all blow up in unique physics-based chains of destruction for amazing moments of unpredictable chaos. All this comes together in Just Cause 3's incredible missions, where you tear down the general's bases of power, liberate towns in the open I remember world, with Just Cause 2, I don't vehicles, know if I've ever seen a game that had that many like facilities. water cooler moments, uh -huh. where people were just coming in and just talking about all the crazy stuff that happened. That's what I love about the series, is that it's like that creativity of like what you can find to do in the world, and no two people will play this game the same way, you know? All of which are tracked <laughs> Look at that! I mean... High score bragging rights. These include races, Scrapyard scrambles, and classic For a big gun open world game and wingsuit looks, courses. It looks good. Crash the yeah, yeah, that was the other thing I noticed frenzies. too when I saw it. Is that it's a pretty world, and I like that it kind of has all this chaos Complete that you can make in it. New mods yeah. that upgrade Rico's explosive capabilities Lips. and vehicles. Okay. Giving players endless ways to cause epic action, destruction, and chaos across 400 square miles of beautiful Mediterranean paradise, Just Cause 3 revolutionizes the open world genre, one massive explosion at a time. Square Enix and Avalanche Studios will set the world on fire December 1st. That's looking a, good. That's a good trailer. It really is. Please welcome to the stage Business Division 6 producer Yosuke Saito. Eh, <laughs> Hello, uh, my name is Yosuke Saito from Business Division 6, as I was just introduced. Uh, I asked for some time today to announce the production of a certain uh, new title that we're working on. Hmm. This project's still very early in the development, but we would like to take the opportunity to announce it today. So, This means we won't see it for five so first, years. Please take a look at this brand new footage. Yeah. Thank you. I really hope they learned their lesson about showing things way too early. what I'm seeing.
this a new mirror? Okay, so that's TGS probably. We learn more about that. The new Nier game. Who should we be sending hey, to TGS? <laughs> so how was that? Uh, it's a new Nier game, and the platform is the PlayStation 4. Mm. Uh, production's just begun on this. But uh, just as we showed now, we really are taking on this challenge with an incredible lineup of development talent. So I... without further ado, I would like to introduce two key individuals in the project who have made it here to the conference today. The director, Mr. Yoko Otaro, and Atsushi Inaba from Platinum Games, who will be working on the development with us. Oh, man. I love Nier, so this is very exciting for me. Oh, and it's Inaba from Platinum? Yep. <laughs> I'm the director of the new project, Mr. Taro Yoko. <laughs> it's now five years since the previous installment in the Nier series. Uh, but we continue to receive lots of messages from fans, both in Japan and across the globe. So I get the sense that the game really has been loved by so many. So to everyone who's supported Nier, I thank you, Heartfelt. So, after hearing about the production of the new Nier project from Saito-san here, and then hearing we would be able to ask Platinum Games and uh, character designer Akihiko Yoshida to contribute to the production, I felt that the quality of the game had already been virtually guaranteed. <laughs> it feels like I really don't have anything I need to do here. But if I say things like that, then a lot of people are going to get angry at me. So, I'd just like to say I'm going to do my very best on this title. <laughs> so, thank you to everyone. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Atsushi Inaba from Platinum Games and we will be handling the development of the new Nier title. We really didn't think that this type of collaboration would ever be possible prior to being approached by Square Enix about it. The request that we received was to instill new strength in the Nier franchise by levering Platinum Games' area of special expertise, which is action. And we readily accepted it, because if that was the case, then we felt that there was a lot that we could contribute to a new project. This title has amassed support of many passionate fans around the world, so we feel a great sense of responsibility towards them. But we're not really worried about keeping the new game true to the spirit of Nier, as Mr. Yoko here is on board directing the game. Hmm. Currently, all of our staff who love the Nier franchise are really hard at work developing the game in full force alongside Mr. Yoko. It'll take a while before it's ready, but we hope you can look forward to seeing the outcome. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Yoko, Mr. Inaba. Lastly, I really want to tell everyone that I myself have really wanted to develop a new Nier title for a very long time. But I felt it would be very difficult to respond to the sheer passion that our fans have for this title if we couldn't do it with everything we had. Therefore, it's taken a very long time, but I'm sincerely very happy and very proud that we were able to announce this fantastic new game today and the development team. Thank you. Even the subtitle of the game is still very much a secret, but we should be able to provide further updates regarding the title around autumn this year. So please look forward to any further updates on that day. Thank you very much to everyone. Yeah, I mean, that's totally a TGS, TGS time frame. That's, that's pretty exciting. I'm we'll, stoked. We'll talk about Nier in the post show, because I have some 
I have some conflicting thoughts on that game. Here we go. Tomb Raider. Something else dwells in the darkness of this place. But I've got to continue. I finally feel a sense of purpose again. Like I'm doing what I was meant to do. Some kind of marker. The journey will be perilous. But I must find a way. Good. Yeah, I feel like we've got a better look at that at Please welcome game other press conference. Crystal Dynamics for Rise of the Tomb Raider. Oh, Ryan still. Porter. Here we go. Here's Hi, everyone. My name's Brian Horton. I'm the game director on Tomb Raider. Yesterday, at the Microsoft press briefing, we shared our gameplay world premiere for Rise of the Tomb Raider. Because Tomb Raider is all about Lara and her journey, we always want to make her feel as human and believable as possible. Today, we'll share some of the techniques that we use to achieve things that were simply weren't possible until now. In this exclusive, behind-the-scenes look, filmed at our studio, you'll hear from some of the talented people who bring Lara to life. In Rise of the Tomb Raider, our goal is to create the most believable characters in games. The talented artists and animators at Crystal Dynamics have built Lara from the ground up to realize this vision. Part of creating the most realistic character that we possibly can are things like details now. So pores on the skin, we're talking about eyelashes down to finite things where snowflakes would land on that eyelash. I mean, things that really get into the nitty gritty of what makes something feel very tangible. It gives it a lot we of character. We have one of those statues you those can see in the background. Those are the things we're able to do yes, now. There's a first read, which is Lara's main silhouette. We want that secondary read. We want to get in there really tight and be able to see all those little tiny things that make her very, very unique. It's the imperfections. Even some scars from the last game have been transported over to the new model. We want to show character and progression of time and show that she's gone through some things to get here. <laughs> but we need that. that. And, uh, and we use that data to get make sure the proportions were right, that the fold logic was right on her clothes. And then we added our artistic touch to it, and we added a whole lot of details to it. So we can actually look at her skin, we'll see the pores, you, you look at the clothes, at least she's dressed appropriately the for the weather. So we added yeah, a yeah. lot to that uh, to make her come to life. Whenever she gets into a fight, she can get dirty or she can get bloody. Uh, she's still so wearing she's the gray tank top, though. She'll actually accumulate snow on her clothes. So she fits into every environment that she's in. We're able to actually capture the nuances of facial movement, and uh, she really comes to life. And it is so much better than the bone-driven system that we used in the past. And this all adds to the realism of her acting. At Crystal, we look at every granular detail, from her anatomy, to her garments, to her motion, in order to deliver a believable and lifelike Lara Croft. These goals become a reality as we see Lara navigate the mysterious catacombs of the Prophet's tomb. There we have it. We hope you've enjoyed this behind-the-scenes look of the making of Lara Croft. Rise of the Tomb Raider features a beautiful, hostile world filled with massive gameplay spaces with challenge and things to discover. Lara will use her environment to outsmart her enemies, crafting improvised weapons and explosives. Rest assured, we're putting the tombs back into Tomb Raider, giving you an exclusive first look at the Prophet's tomb gives you a glimpse of that. We hope to show you more in the coming months, and thanks again have a great E3. Game still looks good. Fall's gonna be insane. Yeah. Please welcome to the stage, Square Enix Montreal, head of studio, Patrick No. So this will be Deus Ex, Thank you. Mm -hmm. Good morning, bonjour, how are you, gozaimasu. Uh, yep. My name is Patrick No, head of studio at Square Enix Montreal. 
we are hard at work bringing some of the best IPs from Square Enix to the mobile ecosystem. Our ambition is to craft fresh, premium, award-winning experiences designed specifically for mobile and tablet. Hmm. Our first releases, Hitman Go and Hitman oh, Sniper, yeah. are two diversely original takes on the same franchise, but they're, they're a testament to the creativity and quality that we strive for in crafting true AAA mobile games. I heard people talking about Hitman Many Go concepts, a lot. Like, that scored well. Yeah. Intuitive controls. This and released Sniper, uh, like, last week. When we introduced before. the Go concept Recently, with Hitman yeah. Go, it was a celebration of the franchise distilled to its core. Today, we're bringing this concept to another beloved franchise. We are extremely excited uh, to bring you our next inspiration for Go. It's a celebration of adventure distilled to its purest, most elegant yeah. one-touch form. Kingdom Hearts? Kim? What do you know? Adventure in Tomb Raider. It's Lara Croft, have you never seen her before? A turn-based experience sent in a long-forgotten world, <laughs> delivering gorgeous visual, mesmerizing soundtrack, and challenging gameplay all at your fingertips. This is Lara Croft Go. We can't wait to show you more. Have a great E3. Thank you. Episodes in yeah, Life is Strange so right two now. More. <laughs> and this is more the like the third person action RPG. Yeah, right? it's like the Hyrule Warriors. Yeah. I played it, it looks pretty pretty damn good. I liked it. You go, Square. You go. <laughs> Please welcome to the stage Kingdom Hearts series executive <gasps> producer Shinji Hashimoto. Oh my God, it's happening, it's happening, it's happening. <laughs> <laughs> Breathe, Kim. He's also the executive producer on Final Fantasy, isn't he? Hi, everyone. Good morning. Kingdom Hearts series executive producer Hashimoto. They're not giving us any audio, Kim. I'm gonna... They also turned their audio way down. <laughs> You're killing me here! <laughs> what did he say? Long ago... We looked upon a foreboding sky. Okay, so this is FF7 again. The memory of the star. Did they really just do that to me? Burns eternal in our hearts. <clears throat> in its wake came an age of silence. 
Yet with each fond remembrance, we knew those encountered were not forgotten. That someday we would see them again. Perhaps it was no more than wishful thinking. So this is what we saw at the Sony. But after the mm -hmm. long calm, there are now the beginnings of a stir. The reunion at hand may bring joy. It may bring fear. But let us embrace whatever it brings. For they are coming back. Oh, I did miss Barrett at last, the first time. The promise has been made. Oh man. I'm excited. That's gonna I'm so excited for that. There we go. More to come this winter. Okay. So not TGS in that front. Yeah. We'll learn more then. Sweeney. Final yes. years of anticipation, we are very happy to announce that we will be remaking Final Fantasy VII for the PlayStation 4. He's been waiting to say that for so long. And this time, we're only announcing that we're doing a remake, so please stay tuned for more detailed information in the future. Okay. Furthermore, last year we announced that we would be bringing the PC version of Final Fantasy VII to the PlayStation 4 and that we will be releasing it around spring 2015. No one cares anymore. <laughs> we'd, we'd really like to thank you for your continued patience, as we have to ask that you wait just a little bit longer until winter this year. But additionally, we would like to take the opportunity to inform you that we're also bringing Final Fantasy VII to iOS. Hmm. And we're hoping to deliver that one to you before the end of summer this year. So please look out for the release. FF7 was supposed to be spring. About the Kingdom Hearts series. <laughs> First, let's take a look at this new video. Kim, <gasps> uh, you promised jumping up and dancing. I'm not I don't know it. yet. I don't know what it is yet. Hold on. Okay. Oh, this is Worlds. <laughs> it's Kingdom Hearts. You promised dancing. It's not what I want right now. That is not that is not the agreement we made. No. You promised Kingdom Hearts dancing. It's a uh... uh... You sound pretty pumped. It's cute. That's another broken promise from Kim regarding. I meant Kingdom Enix. Hearts 3. Don't even. That wasn't specified. It was Kingdom Hearts. Mm -hmm. I wonder what hashtag we can start about that. Uh. <laughs> I've never seen someone so disappointed to see Kingdom Hearts. Is this really that big of a letdown? Yeah. Fine, it's just I want wanted something else. How close are you to crying right now? I haven't given up hope because you know he could still come out and talk. Okay. See, I'm not like an iPhone gamer. Hmm. He's back. He's back. Hold on. We recently announced that Kingdom Hearts Unchained Key would be made available in Japan. And we're very happy to announce that we'll be bringing this game to North America as well, making it the first Kingdom Hearts title dedicated for smartphones. 
Unchained Key depicts a story that links in to Kingdom Hearts 3. And it presents a convenient way to enjoy the beautiful worlds of Disney right there on your smartphone. We hope that you can look forward to seeing it. Okay, moving along. I'd like to discuss the title I think we've all been waiting for. <laughs> Kingdom Hearts 3. But rather than having me talk about it, I thought it would be much better if we watched some actual footage of the game. But before that, we'd like to show you a video message from some very special guests. So please take a look at this. Is it Mickey Mouse? It's nowhere. I bet. Hi, Kingdom Hearts fans. Oh, no. Hi, Disney fans. I'm Greg Coleman. I'm the Vice President of Worldwide Marketing and Franchise Management here at the Walt Disney Animation Studios. Oh my God, are we going to have a Kingdom Hearts ride? And I'm joined with my <laughs> I've been friend, wanting this for so long. Master Xehanort. No, actually, I'm Roy Connolly, and I am a producer here at Walt Disney Animation Studios. There is an amazing collaboration going on right now between Disney and Square Enix for Kingdom Hearts 3. We're working with the best animated storytellers and the best game developers in the world to put this out. And I'm which proper. incredibly proud because this is my film, the film that I produced, that I love. Movie? It's going to be the first one in a series. It's called Tangled. We have this amazing partnership between Square Enix and Disney and the fact that Square Enix Tangled is world really concern? trying to bring it hmm. to life with the same integrity that we brought it to life with. It's going to be cool. There's a lot more to tell, and we're just going to give you a little bit today, but we couldn't be more excited. Let's do this. Come on. <laughs> My neck hurts from like being one <laughs> you're, you're, You just keep doing the false, huh? Huh? We're really honored to have such a great message from two key members of Walt Disney Animation Studios. As our guest mentioned, we're introducing a brand new world into the game. So, without any further ado... Tangled. Uh, but I, I think Roy is actually here today, Roy from the video. <laughs> so, hey Roy, thank you for coming today. Please give Roy a big hand. Kim's gonna have a heart attack. First, okay, time for a lunch break, and then so, we'll watch it. Without any further ado, here is the world premiere of the latest footage from Kingdom Hearts 3. So do you dance before or after or oh, during? Yes. I gotta see how I feel about this. Hold <laughs> on. Have you heard of the ancient Keyblade War? Yeah, the Master's favorite story. So, you know the Lost Masters. They're the ones who started the Keyblade War. Never heard of them. You can drop the facade. Exuding excitement right now, Kim. <laughs> oh. oh, man. <laughs> what? Teacup. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> okay, so Keyblades haven't been able to do all this crazy crap on before. Right? Nope. Shall darkness prevail and light expire? The future. It's already been written. Who's to say I can't change it? 
and maybe light will prevail. There is more light than meets the eye. You might be surprised. Oh, I hope so. Wait, wait, wait. Let's see if there's anything else. Yeah, it's just now in development. Not even now. Not a year. Not <laughs> Someone it. shouts, thank you. <laughs> you got this so what did you think? When I first saw that video, I was personally quite surprised by the evolution that the Kingdom Hearts series has undergone. And the team continues to work really hard on its development so we can continue to bring more surprises to all of you. More? Your continued support and encouragement is greatly appreciated. Thank you. I just can't believe that just happened. I'm like stunned to the fact that I couldn't move. <laughs> okay. Could you please bear with me just a little bit longer? What? Since I'm actually involved with several projects at the moment, and there's one more that I'd like to bring to you today. What? It's called World of Final Fantasy. You can see the title ah, right here. Okay. <laughs> We saw this one yesterday yes, also, right? Yes, yes, yes. And why we introduced the world of Final Fantasy yesterday at the Sony conference as well. So please, take a look at this trailer first. It's like a Joe Juba game. As memories lost uh -huh. are slowly drawn back in, I think you just secured the review for this one, Kim. Any before. Welcome to Grimoire, a world of the weest of beings. Here you can befriend adorably familiar monsters. They're cute. And turn tiny enough to jump on for a ride, or turn tall enough for them to ride on you. Join forces with adorably familiar heroes and heroines, and witness a most peculiar story unfold. They may be small in stature, but the fate that awaits them is grand indeed. This is the size of a new Final Fantasy, the beginning of a new world, and a tale with countless encounters. World of Final Fantasy. I can't believe they showed a Kingdom Hearts trailer. <laughs> <laughs> Kim, the stream is loving your uh, teacup moment. As you just saw, this title takes place in a completely new universe, very different from those seen in previous Final Fantasy titles. And I'd like to introduce you now to the new director, who was, we felt, a perfect fit for this new title. So, please welcome the director of World of Final Fantasy, Mr. Hiroki Chiba. World of Final Fantasy. Hello, everyone. Uh, I am the director of World of Final Fantasy, Hiroki Chiba. Final Fantasy is really central to the history of Square Enix. And from this long established IP, many products have been developed in many different ways. We really are truly grateful that this IP, that Final Fantasy, has been loved for so many years. However, we also found that this long history that the series has has become a factor in what may be distancing some new people from experiencing the joy of Final Fantasy. So, with that in mind, I identified three challenges to address in the planning of this project, with the hope that a wider audience would get to know and love what Final Fantasy is all about and how wonderful it truly can be. First of all, I wanted it to be a game that everyone of any age or gender could play. Secondly, I want to bring out a completely new visual experience. And thirdly, to create a new game system that anyone can play that's both simple and very deep at the same time. First, I always thought about the possibility of creating a game that both small children and their parents could play and share and enjoy together. And here we really have a chance to realize that that kind of wonderful experience with this excellent IP, with Final Fantasy. So, in order to realize this vision, we really are challenging ourselves to create a completely new visual representation for the game that's never been done before with Final Fantasy series. Something like the excitement of adventuring through a world of toys and figurines. I assume everyone, both adults and children alike, have wanted to dive into the world of their toys at least once in their lifetime. 
And we really want to make that into a reality. And the one feature I'd really like you to pay attention in the new game is this here. As you can see, the, player, the players and monsters that you have in your team form towers to engage in battles. And we've adapted a never before seen unique system in which the strength and the battle powers of the party depends on the formation of these towers. So, with the Final Fantasy systems that have been refined over the course of its history at the core of this new system, we aim to offer a new, simple, and yet very deep experience. Finding it hard to get excited about this, Kim. So, what do you think? I hope that this presentation has piqued your interest in finding out what kind of game this is going to be. I'm We're planning to, developing this type to go on a plane to people. Japan Those right now and Final just Fantasy like we'll feel the same way that we do. We're only aiming for a release in 2016. So please look out for it. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>
They deal in secrets that unseat that governments the and land. get people killed. Mm -hmm. And they are about to compromise uh, more famously the, in a major the guy in a country. Okay. <laughs> Time is of the essence. Victor Novikov must be eliminated. You're gonna have a spy organization? Don't name it after someone evil. Yeah. The essence of a sandbox game like Hitman is freedom of approach. Where you go, how you infiltrate, who you become. Nice. Hey, you. Knowing which disguises give you access is key. Okay, then. Get out. But beware, some individuals are more observant than others. Okay, who are you? Oh. Ah. Ah. Hey, hey, we got Be prepared to improvise. Where is he? You see him, anyone? Yeah, where the hell did he go? As you experiment with your play style, we lost him. Each hit can go from bloody murder <laughs> to a genuine masterpiece of assassination. Complete mastery of a level is rewarded. As your skills evolve over time, so do your options. Prepare equipment in advance and plan the perfect hit. New locations will appear over time. You will travel the world. New missions, new targets. Some targets only ever surface once for a limited time. When they are gone, they are gone forever. And when you think you're ready to be a contender, Contracts mode has evolved within the deepest, most expansive Hitman sandboxes yet. Mark your own targets and share them with your friends. Challenge a world of assassins. Welcome to a world of assassination. It is cool. ever expanding, ever dangerous. It will never stop challenging you. Another December game. Yeah. Well, at least it starts in December. Mm. They seem to imply that it's going to yeah. keep going. Yes. This is all I wanted, too. Oh, man. Space bait. As the inaugural Space Reconnaissance Force mission launched, mankind took its first steps on worlds beyond its own. One fortunate byproduct of the prolonged conflict with Lazonia is symbology a power based on written patterns resembling runes. The Ten Wise Men herald an interstellar apocalypse 
but doom is adverted thanks to an earthling mistaken for the hero of light. War with the Vendini erupts, sparking a struggle that could end time itself. How this incident helped uncover the star ocean's origin will be told for generations, as long as the sands of time continue to fall. Amidst these chronicles, a new entry shall be inscribed. One replete with unexpected encounters and heart-wrenching farewells. One where the fate of a planet hangs in the balance. show something other than that. I don't think spoiling a 10-year-old game is, is that. Joe, awesome. people could be getting into the series. You didn't even start with a My name is, uh, and hello there to everyone in Japan watching on live streams. My name is uh, Shuichi Kobayashi, and I'm the producer of Star Ocean, Integrity and Faithlessness. This title was previously announced in April for Japan, and today we would like to announce that the new Star Ocean project is also confirmed to release in North America and Europe on the PlayStation 4. Yes. Thank to all the series fans out there, thank you very much for waiting. Naturally, we have none other than Triace, the great developer that has worked on all of the previous installments in the series on board to develop the latest entry in the franchise as well. We've prepared a world exclusive gameplay trailer to be revealed today at this conference. Yes. Oh, so cool. please take a look and enjoy. Yes, yes, yes. You got your energy back after Kingdom Hearts bring now? It, bring it, bring All it. All right. about so far. Let's see this combat. It's been oh a good looking series. Oh my gosh. Those games always look really good. Oh man. So, how do you like that? Life feels good again. It really is an evolved <laughs> form of a good old school Japanese <laughs> RPG. That's what I want. Uh, one of the key words for the development of this title is uh, seamlessness. Uh, and with that in mind, rather than creating a trailer that focuses on the more dramatic aspects of the game, we decided to capture and showcase some direct footage that will help you get a better idea of how the game will actually play. Even more. Mm -hmm. Not only do the transitions from exploration to battle in the game occur seamlessly, but I other aspects, that. That such as the event scenes, will also occur seamlessly as well. In the previous installment, in Star Ocean IV The Last Hope, we use cutscenes as an effective way to liven up the story. But, but this method of storytelling can also be an obstruction to the rhythm of the game, uh, as the player becomes more of a passive observer while gameplay is uh, temporarily halted. For Star Ocean Integrity and Faithlessness, we're incorporating two types of event scenes. One are dynamic cutscenes that occur as seamless events, and the second are the traditional static cutscenes that focus on staging the story. Okay. In developing this title, we aim to improve the playability and excitement of the overall experience, and we really want to break away from that notion that JRPGs are essentially nothing more than movies rather than games. 
So, as you've seen in the gameplay just now, uh, there will be more characters than ever before who join the party and can fight in battle at the same time. The game system is also very new, although rest assured that in its evolution the system still retains the feel of the real-time action battles that were previously so well received in the series. Hmm. Uh, furthermore, also note that the gameplay screen is still quite early in development, so the UI and many other elements are still temporary. Uh, and also, additionally, the footage that we showcased today was uh, captured at a frame rate of 30 frames per second. But for the finished game, we're aiming to go for uh, 60 frames per second all the time. Wow. It's rare that they're actually like that forthcoming about yeah. something so early. In the video, uh, we'd like to announce that this title is scheduled for release in North America and Europe in 2016 and for winter 2015 in Japan. Wow. It's going to be a little while longer till it's ready, but uh, we hope you can look forward to seeing further updates in the future. Thank you, everyone. Still, that means that it's all, you know, a few months away from being Please done. welcome to the stage mm -hmm. Idos Montreal, head of studio David Anfossi, and executive Deus narrative yeah. director for Deus Ex, Mankind Divided, Mary DeMarle. I, like the, I had the Montreal part right. But it's, Hello. Idos, Montreal. Hi, everyone. I'm glad to be standing here in front of you today. Five years ago, we presented you with the now criti critically acclaimed, sorry, um, Deus Ex Human Revolution. But today, Eidos Montreal is working hard to deliver you a worthy sequel for both it and the Deus Ex franchise as a whole. As usual, we are not compromising on quality and are constantly striving to meet the high expectations of the fans. To do so, the team behind Deus Ex Human Revolution is back, working with a groundbreaking new game engine, the Dawn engine. The Dawn engine allows us to push the limits of technology, making the world of Deus Ex truly come to life. Mary, could you give us some more details about Deus Ex Mankind Divided? Thank you, David. I certainly can. Deus Ex Mankind Divided takes place in 2029, which is two years after the end of Human Revolution. It's another game Adam from Jensen a cover game. Mm -hmm. Although both he and the world he's living in have changed. Mechanically augmented people like Jensen have become outcasts in this world. They are feared and even hated by a majority of people. Many are being branded as terrorists and forced to live in AUG-only ghettos under heavy police surveillance. We call it a mechanical apartheid. Jensen isn't living in a ghetto. He's left Seraph Industries and has joined a newly formed division of Interpol known as Task Force 29. His job is to investigate and stop terrorist attacks all over the world. At the same time, though, he's secretly working as a covert double agent within the task force itself. He believes that a powerful group of men and women known as the Illuminati have created the group in order to serve their own interests. He wants to stop them, and he's teamed up with some hacker activists in order to bring them down. To do it, he's going to need some pretty amazing tools in his arsenal. New weapons, new augmentations, like a peps gun that is now hidden inside his mechanical arm. Also, his detachable nanoblades, which can now be used as deadly projectiles. These are just two of the enhancements that Jensen has that can really make him become the next stage in mankind's evolution. Of course, how he uses these tools and how he evolves is totally up to you, the player, to determine. Choices and consequences are at the heart of a Deus Ex experience. And we, with Mankind Divided, are pushing them even further. Choices that you make as a player will not only change how the game is played, but it will also change the story as it unfolds. The actions you take as the player will ultimately determine the end of the game and the end of the story. To put it simply, we want Mankind Divided to be one of the best action RPG experiences out there. And we are working very hard to make sure it happens. Right, David? 
Totally, Mary. Thank you. Enough talk. Today, I have the privilege to present you with the worldwide reveal of our very first in-game trailer. Nice. I hope you will enjoy it. Hell yes. Yeah. One of the big themes of E3 seems to be in-game. They, they're really mm -hmm. hammering that home. I like that. You don't seem surprised to see me. I'm not. This isn't a social call, Rucker. I'm here to take you in. My people and I will resist you. Innocent people died in that bombing today. The augmented are suffering a genocide. It begins with demonizing us, treating us as less than human, exiling us so we are forgotten, and then exterminating us. You're getting pissed enough to end this guy yet. I got a no-kill order. Who'd have thought he'd done enough to warrant extreme prejudice? How dare you speak to me of peace and fairness on behalf of masters who hide in the shadows and murdering without the courage to proclaim their convictions in front of the rest of the world. I suspect there's a power struggle brewing within our organization. Some people inside Ark are less committed to our ideals. Then help me find them. Somewhere down there, hiding in plain sight, is your real terrorist. I see. Then isn't it time you brought them into the light? Dun dun dun. That's cool. I'm excited for that. I really liked Human Revolution, so. 2016. All right. Cool stuff, huh? Deus Ex Mankind divided <laughs> Someone throwing up the devil horns. In yep. early 2016, the game will be playable on PC, mm. PS4, and Xbox One. Please come to our Deus Ex VI playroom to experience the full live gameplay, gameplay demo. Thank you, and enjoy the rest of the show. Man, now I'm kind of wishing I was at E3. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get a chance. You'll get your chance to play it, kid. And now, please welcome President and CEO of Square Enix Holdings, Yosuke Matsuda. Thank you for taking the time to join us here today. Also, thanks to everyone around the world for watching as we kick off E3 2015. As you saw today, and also from the announcement we made yesterday, we possess remarkable content, including our legendary RPG Final Fantasy. Now, I would like to take a moment to introduce the Final Fantasy Portal app. This okay. comprehensive app provides any and all information related to Final Fantasy, and an English version will be coming this summer. We really hope you enjoy the rich content it has to offer. What is it? Speaking of RPGs, before I finish, there is one more announcement I would like to share with you today. What do you think it is, Kim? Something for Final RPGs Fantasy RPGs are our major part of Square Enix legacy, including Final Fantasy, 
Dragon Quest, and Kingdom Hearts. RPG fans from all over the world have supported us along the years. And we are devoted to keep creating incredible new RPG titles. Please be good. Please be good. Oh, With good. that, I'm happy to announce Ooh. the initiation of a new RPG okay. project being <laughs> developed by a newly established studio. Oh. Mm. OK. Today, okay. I'd like to share some of the details for the first time. The new studio working on this project is called Tokyo RPG Factory. Sweet. The name Sweet. represents our dedication to creating Japanese RPGs. Yes! That's awesome. This is an all-new console RPG. It's not a spin-off or a remake, but a completely new series. With its delicate and somewhat wistful atmosphere, we, we are calling it Project Setna. I cannot share too many details at this point, but the game is already under development and is planned for a global release in 2016. Hmm. As you can see from the amazing content we presented here today, this year's E3 lineup is the most powerful, unique, and diverse in the history of Square Enix. From acclaimed franchises to exciting IP, new IP, IPs with rich stories, creative characters, and world. Square Enix is bringing phenomenal entertainment to every type of gamer for every viable platform. The amazing content and services created by our global crea creative teams truly represent, uh, represent our goal to help spread happiness across the globe by providing unforgettable experiences. In 2015, you will see a full range of creativity the Square Enix group has to offer, beginning at this E3. But we will never stop moving forward. We promise you that Square Enix will continue to deliver ultimate entertainment experiences that will amaze and excite gamers. Our powerful content and brilliant creators make that possible. Now, I'd like to welcome everyone from our talented studios and partners from uh, around the world to join me back on stage. You really like the keyblade guns, huh? Mm hmm <laughs> I love the, the yeah. wise guy. <laughs> I 
everyone's clapping and Hashimoto is just standing there, dignified. Oh, there he goes. I mean, it's pretty balanced on both, like, good Western and Japanese games coming. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure we'll we'll hit on yeah. that a little bit in the in the post show. Lots to the lots to discuss here. Again, we are so thankful for our valued fans and partners joining us here today as we celebrate the gaming industry and introduce you to the future of Square Enix. Please visit, it, visit our booth on the show floor and stay tuned to Square Enix Presents for all of the latest updates and announcements from us. Thank you and have a great E3. All right. All right, well, that's the, that's the Square Enix Press Conference and uh, our commentary about it, but we are gonna be back in just a second Yep. And start running down the post show. Like, yep. literally seconds. Just second. So, just stick around. Okay. <laughs> there we are. Kim. Yeah. We watched Square Enix just now. Yes, we did. Their, um, uh, their press event. Their first press event they've had in years and years. Like, I, they had one at my first E3, I think, mm -hmm. which would have been like 2004. And I don't know if they've had one since then. We went to one, which a mini one for Kingdom Hearts 3 and Final Fantasy 15 when it became, but yeah, wasn't an actual they, like conference conference like this one. Yeah, this is their first like big formal yeah. press conference. And I think that uh, I, I think that we saw why. I mean, they have. They, they had, knocked it out of the park. Yeah, they, like, they had a lot of good stuff to show. I mean, they're balanced on both ends. I think what really surprised me with it was almost every game they showed I wanted to play. I don't, there wasn't <laughs> very many that I was like, uh, you know, but to say the least, it feels like. Square gets it a bit that they need to show a lot. And I like that they seem very dedicated to supporting not even like just the Western side, but the Japanese RPGs are coming back. Yeah. And that's really exciting. Um, but one thing surprised me is that they didn't show anything of Final Fantasy 15. And I don't know if they're waiting for maybe Gamescom for that or what or I they just figured we got the demo the, so yeah i get it. i mean i i yeah i think anyway that the r r rationale behind that is mm -hmm. the fact that yeah they did just update the demo people mm -hmm. have been playing it it's like like that's the proof is is kind of in the pudding Putting there already in terms of their their commitment to well, it um very but, smart with the kingdom hearts 3 what, all right let's just get right to it come no, on now. hold on let's hold just, on come on hold, come on joe well, i want to i i, I want to uh talk about something about it first though and that's like to like to contrast we'll get into kingdom hearts kim you got to keep your kingdom hearts pants on so uh previous e3s like one of the things square is sort of infamous for anyway it's just like having one big trailer like one big trailer reel mm -hmm. and that's kind of the most content we get out of yeah. them. they don't usually have these big events or anything like that mm -hmm. so um i think just as a general whole for this press conference one of the things that was very important is the fact that like not only are they having a lot of games to mm -hmm. show but in many cases they're doing more than just like here's a quick trailer we're not really gonna talk about yeah, it a whole yeah. lot and it's not sort of the like well, this is a trailer just recut from the last trailer yeah, you saw. Yeah, yeah, that looks so. really good. I'm actually super excited for TGS this year based on everything we saw here. Yeah. Um, like I said, definitely had this. So coming for, as a Japanese RPG fan, let's uh -huh. just put it that way, um, Square has been going over the years, like really digging more into the Western side. So there became this little bit of concern on like, is that kind of where they're going? Mobile became bigger. Um, you know, these games, like they'd given up kind of a little bit on Dragon Quest, which was hurtful to me personally. Yeah, um, yeah. But now it feels like they're finally starting to see kind of that these games are worthwhile again to do. And I think uh, something interesting and not just in the same thing, but I mean, we saw that with like the Shamu Kickstarter mm, yesterday, mm -hmm. just 
people want these games. And I think it's great to see that for once we don't have to be like, for Square's had a reputation where people were like, please bring it over. We want it. Please, <laughs> please come on. And, you yeah, know, yeah. even with like Bravely Default, like how we had to campaign so hard, you know, and then Nintendo yeah. had to bring it over, which was like, what is going on here? So that as it feels good to me. Yeah. Well, and I think, and not only is it just lip service, I guess we, we don't see the actual result mm -hmm. of it yet, but Square has said before that Japanese RPGs are important to them and a big part of their business, but we haven't necessarily seen, seen that play years. out. And yeah. then, you know, one of the big things coming out of this press conference was the like announcement of a new studio that is just called the Tokyo RPG, RPG Factory. Factory. Which is like, my, that's, that's just great. <laughs> like, come on now. I mean, that and freaking the Nier. Oh my God. Like, <laughs> Okay. Whew. Actually, I wanted to talk about Nier a little bit. Yes. Because as happy as I am to see you that announcement. You did not like Nier. That's not 100% true. Nier to me falls into a very similar category that a game like Deadly Premonition or Earth Defense Force do, where okay. it's like, like, you, you can play and enjoy them. Nier is maybe one that I personally enjoyed a little less, but I see where I see where the attraction see. is, you know? I mean, it, like, it, Nier is definitely falls into, yeah. that hit, into that category as, like, it's definitely, like, a cult hit game. Mm -hmm. and, I, and it's hit or miss for some people. And, you know, like I said, well, I, I reviewed it. It was maybe a little more miss for me. But I, 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 see, I see the potential there, and, mm -hmm. I, and I'm excited for another one. Well, as so I said, I adored Nier. I did not like the new Guard game that they had. Right. Um, that kind of didn't really click with me in the same way, but Nier, oh, I love <laughs> Nier, okay? So even to just, like, see them go, like as you said, go at it again, and, like, nobody was expecting that. And this is what I love about E3 in general is when you have those surprise announcements mm -hmm. that hit. Like, I was kind of talking about this, no, no, well, nothing surprised me. And I guess for me, I just always want to have that, like, way out of left field, like, where the heck did that come from? Like Nier. Nier, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so that yeah. was good. And freaking yes on the kingdom hearts like here's the thing guys i'm gonna be honest i didn't think a trailer was happening i was hopeful i always have hope which joe always laughs at me for because usually i don't get what i hope for uh <laughs> i should i should also clarify it's not just kim saying like boy i hope there's a kingdom hearts trailer it's like her making plans around there being a kingdom hearts trailer okay here's what i'm when saying it's not I've, going to I've happen i've skipped out of e3 like i've been like i just have to go to e3 because what if they have it even though i know they're not but okay but, but. you don't because you hope i'm a hopeful girl yeah kim did you well, dance for kingdom hearts no if um because i just like froze in this weird like <laughs> like and then i just saw teacup and then like uh i because i just i got focused i think what it is and i was thinking about this was when it was when we saw kingdom hearts 3 we hadn't seen it a while when it was first like announced that it was coming back so mm -hmm. the excitement like oh my god they're finally like reintroducing it they're ready to talk about it after that long wait here i knew there was maybe a possibility but i just like wanted to really focusing on the gameplay yeah. and i guess i kind of just got yeah I've, I've not seen anything quite like it where as that was playing kim was just like <laughs> with like this smile plastered on her face and it's just staring unblinking oh. at the screen yeah and squealing when the teacup showed yes up. well yeah. you know it's cute <laughs> i like the disney attractions and i remember i talked to uh, i did a preview for the issue and um, i got to talk to nomura and he was actually like very tight-lipped about he wasn't sure how the attractions were going to play out more so if they're going to be a special attack or what and to kind of see that actually in the trailer again that they've stuck with the attractions which mm -hmm. i liked and then see that keyblade kind of morph which would they, which was they had shown us that it was going to go into the guns but i still think that all that stuff just that trailer cemented that all this is badass and that's what i wanted right yeah yeah i think um, it's definitely showing a little more like versatility to the combat mm -hmm. that people that people have yeah been and i for. definitely want to see you know they're trying to keep those worlds under wraps so obviously they weren't showing very many mm -hmm. um but still excited about all that and um, to say, I guess we should talk a little bit about the Western stuff. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll Whoa, get to it. Whoa, Joe, wow. He always makes fun of me and is like, mm. Well, I mean, I feel like I feel like we're sort of on the JRPG kick okay. right now, and there's still more to talk about on that front. For instance, Kingdom Hearts Unchained. Uh-huh. What did you think about that? I said this in the when we were watching. I just don't play much on mobile. Okay. So I'm, I think it looked okay. Um, 
But to me, that's not kind of what, again, they do, Square's doing the, oh, this is going to be lead into three. And, you know, we're, I'm kind of at the point now where I'm exhausted on that angle. Because they do that so much. Yes. There's so, at this point, there are two main Kingdom Hearts games. Yeah. And then just this yeah, and cornucopia that's what I think, of peripheral Well, stuff. I mean, you saw my face. Well, plus they did it be like they made <laughs> me think it was going to be three and then it wasn't. But even yeah. just in that, I think at this point I can't be, you know, I, it's so hard to get excited for just another game that's going to leave you with like a little piece of the puzzle, no yeah. matter how big they say it is. It's sometimes it's like I could watch the trailer, like someone's going to YouTube capture it and yeah. I'll be fine. Yeah. Um, and moving over to the uh, Final Fantasy side of things, they showed once again the trailer for Final Fantasy VII remake. Yes. Um, Nothing which new there. We saw which there wasn't anything anything new apart from the fact that we are going to see we're going to learn more about the remake coming this winter. Um, so beyond that, I guess we just sort of have to sit tight until mm -hmm. then. But it's it seems I mean yeah, from it, what we saw. It seemed still like very early in development. Like I was it, sad they said you know. winter. I was hoping maybe TGS more that might, you know. Even oh, are you looking forward to TGS? Would I you don't like know. more more to have? Okay, know. okay. <laughs> uh, so there's that. There's also the fact that the Final Fantasy VII like remaster or whatever that was mm -hmm. supposed to be coming out on um, on not. PSN is now not coming out recently like it was supposed to, but that is also holding mm -hmm. up until winter. Mm -hmm. And Final Fantasy Worlds, yeah, or World, World. what was it? Um, they also showed that as, and like a Final Fantasy game that uses a lot of the familiar characters. You see, like the chocobos. And oh the yeah, magic, like, I for armor honestly, stuff, I but... forgot about that till you just said it. So yeah. it really, I I don't know what to make of that. I have a feeling that something like that would be at TGS, and I like, probably will have impressions. Then. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> because well, and that's the sort of thing. It seems yeah, like it's, it's like made a smaller. Yeah, it's made to sort of represent the Final Fantasy brand, but at the same mm -hmm. time be more accessible to people, yeah. which means that it's, you know, if, if you're a sort of long-standing fan and are into the more, like, yeah, I, I would say more traditional JRPG mm -hmm. mechanics, this is probably not right up your alley, but, mm -hmm. I mean, it's still, like, the art style looks good. We were talking during the uh, Nintendo press conference about how important it is these days to have, like, a good art an style. interesting art style, mm -hmm. and at least it has it has that going for it. So, yeah, before, mm -hmm. we have to see more of it before we can really... Say what's what. And wide, I guess Star Ocean. Star Ocean is the other big one. Star Ocean, Integrity and Faithlessness. I just hate these subtitles. Uh, <laughs> you know, nothing about that trailer, I'll admit, was really wow worthy per se. No. But it still looks, but it kind of just captures like the essence of just that, of a classic JRPG, which I hope they kind of do some twists on it and make it interesting. I also hope for sure this time around the characters are better. Um, the last one had yeah. The last one was limo. not good for that. But yeah. I, I'm just excited they're showing it. I'm excited that it's coming out soon in Japan. Um, and we have like 2000. I'm telling you, the end of the rest of this year to 20 like everything that's scheduled for 2016. And I know there will be delays, but like mm -hmm. I'm just like really excited for games right now. Yeah, and it's for just sure. like there is so much um, coming, and it's just like I just don't know how I'm going to play it all. But I guess I'm going to have to find a way. Yeah, and that's one of the things that E3 does every year. That for me anyway, mm -hmm. that, that that I always enjoy is that like you know I'm I like games all the time, mm -hmm. but coming out of E3, I'm always I always feel torn in like ten different directions. I'm mm -hmm. like, man, I want to play that, and I want to replay that, mm -hmm. and I want to try you know like yeah. it. The, it, you just feel like a, a kid in a candy store almost. Um, the last Final Fantasy thing to hit on. Oh, sorry. That, to go on Star Ocean. Well, that they didn't explain is that there's the some portal? sort of portal app, which I, I don't, don't know. Maybe it's like a Final Fantasy wiki, but on your phone, I, I don't know what that yeah, is. Yeah, I just... We'll, psh, we'll find out we later this summer. We can skip over that, but, please. So overall, before we move on to the Western stuff, on the JRPG side of things, it's safe to say that I think Kim and I are pretty happy. Yeah. Yeah? Life is good life is, <laughs> life is good some of that stuff still a little early like you know yeah. near near in final fantasy there's still going to be i'm really hoping we don't have a I mean, kind of like we're what we're experiencing with kingdom hearts where yeah. they announced it years and years early well, and now we're just sort of like i want to play it and let's speak to the fact that still not even a year put on kingdom hearts for release you know, yeah, that yeah, that's exactly. troubling in itself. But just to kind of you know yeah. play off that, like I hope we're not waiting long on these. Um, like I said, that's why it was reassuring. Where like Star Ocean is almost done. Yeah, I was thinking with regards to the Final Fantasy mm -hmm. remake, is that if they were to release that in 2017, 
that would be 20 years. Oh, that is a good point. And you I, did the math. And it would also explain, because like right now, release dates that people are showing are all like 2016, uh-huh. right? If you say 2017, people get mad because that's just so off, far off in the future. Mm-hmm. And it's like, why are you showing us this? So maybe they just didn't put a date. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see. No, so, that's a good point. Anyway. Let's, uh, let's, we'll see if Joe's right. And if he is wrong, remember it. Tell him it because he deserves to hear it more often. Uh, that's not true. <laughs> and I suggest you use the hashtag Joe was right for all of your tweets oh, today. God. Uh, okay. So we can move on. JRPG side. Kim and I are both very happy. I'm also happy on the Western side. Western side also looks yeah. pretty good. What the heck is going on here? I've never seen Square come out with this, like, this strong of a lineup. I'm like yeah. balanced out, and you're just like, dang. Because like, think about it. They didn't even need to like go for Dragon show Dragon Quest Heroes in that at all to like try to lever. Oh, we got something. So now going to the Western side even, I'm excited about everything there. I mean, <laughs> I played Just Cause 3 at the pre-E3 event and fell in love with it just because of just, not only because you could just blow everything everything up like that's their philosophy with everything but the game just fosters this like creativity where your mind just you don't even know what you can really do in that world Mm -hmm. and like they just kind of threw us into a demo and just like I was just walking around doing everything I just randomly like pulled a tractor into the world and I was just making wheelies around the field like (laughs) and I told you I was making every like character like hit their hands and their feet like that stuff is just fun okay like I like that this world is so ridiculous yet still grounded in some weird reality like you know a place like this could never exist then at the same time it's like but what if it could and let's just go crazy and have no limits to what it feels that you can do in that game like it's crazy hooking three helicopters together like it's just yeah. I love it all. And that's something the series has, special, uh, has specialized in. I remember, especially with yeah. Just Cause 2, people just talking about all of the crazy stuff you can do in that game. Just like all, you know, like ho- hooking onto this thing and explosives on that thing and, and all of that. Yeah. So it seems like they're definitely continuing this, yes. this tradition of mm-hmm. sort of directed chaos a and little bit. Yeah. I mean, if you guys want to see more too, stay tuned because I'm going to have a preview up for that later today. Ah, uh, and we got a release for that too. Like uh, special- yeah, looks like this, uh, December 1st. Yeah, I'm surprised with how many games are coming out in December. Usually that is a vacant month for us, and I feel like all of a sudden these games just kind of slipped into there. And there's tons in November as always, but it's just yeah. going to be a busy, busy end of the year. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Uh, we saw uh, Hitman. Yeah, which for the first time, like, I'm interested in the hitman series i don't know i i have been and haven't and i haven't really tried much of them to be honest and but i like the freaking locales of that game like oh. it, it seems interesting the thing that i'm wondering about it mm-hmm. is it seems like they're trying a little bit of like a different approach mm-hmm. a, approach to the way the content is rolled out yeah. so like whether or not I'm, I'm curious to hear more details about the way that works mm-hmm. because it seems like you get a certain amount of locations at the start like yeah. a certain number of missions yeah. and you sort of have to keep like stay plugged into it come back and play it you know day after day or week week after week or whatever to sort of experience some of that new content um but that's how you get your money's worth so yeah that's true it kind of reminds me like but, a, i was saying this on the stream for ea it's like it's like a sports game like that thing game stays in my system almost all year and i kind of like when games give you incentive to be on it but if they give you enough content to begin with will also be yeah and the, i think and the hard thing to know yeah that's the that's the trick is is drawing people in with stuff that's compelling and then keeping them with a string mm-hmm. of compelling stuff versus you know i think that you run into a problem as if it's like oh well you get two maps when you start mm-hmm. and then like who, yeah who's, well, who's, get... who's who's gonna who's going to stay on yeah. and if no one stays on that content falls out if, mm-hmm. if, if the, you know if it only sells if it sells a hundred thousand copies mm-hmm. they're not going to keep throwing all of that support behind it yeah so then that's a problem um so well, yeah I, I, we'll find we'll have to see yeah we'll have to see more i mean it seemed like the the footage looked good i guess i i again as always with the three you kind of have to have to take a like well I'm excited to see more about it before, mm-hmm. you know, I can't pass any judgment right now, but that's that's never exciting. Yeah. What people want is like, that looks great or that looks terrible. Yeah, and I think uh, to say the least, like at least we know Tomb Raider is coming out soon. Yep, yeah, November. Yep, yep. Uh, and that footage has all looked good, which is, I always find it reassuring when a game is in the later stages and we're seeing more than just like, you know, a few scenes. And we've got, we got extensive look at that yesterday and then, more detail today on that um yeah. 
what am I going to say? I, I liked, I enjoyed the first one. I wasn't entirely impressed with the story in that, in a way, because I wanted a little more for how they built up that they were going to, you know, make this a more personal story for her, and you were going to really find out more about her. It, it ended a little not as, I guess I thought it could have been more ambitious with what it did. Mm. Um, I so actually have to admit, I haven't gotten around to playing that one yet. Oh, Joe. What? They're... It's great. There's I lots mean, of stuff out there. You like the Uncharted series. I really do, which, yep. yeah. And yep. the gameplay very much mimics that. Uh, so I think you would like it, uh, even to say that it's just it's fun. The weird, I mean, the weird thing for me in, and is that I never had a lot of interest in like Tomb Raider and its old incarnation. Mm -hmm. um, I played a little bit of a little bit of those mm -hmm. here and there, and I, like I just didn't particularly well, like it. And I think that's so what I was thinking. The idea, I'm, I'm sorry, just mm -hmm. real, like the idea mm -hmm. of like, oh, well, now we're gonna take this character that I was never really interested yeah. in before and totally redefine her. Sort of like, nah, I'm good. Yeah, no, but, I think too. I was thinking about that during the conference. Like, I'm like, they're doing a good job with this reboot. Like okay. to go through with it. Like I honestly think I've been more engaged with Tomb Raider because of the way that, that things are playing out. Like yeah. I, you know, I played the early ones, and you know, she'll always be an iconic character for me. Just even though she really didn't have much, but just having it being a female lead, and yeah. that was something that I looked. But going through and playing now the Tomb Raider, and then seeing more of this, I'm like, I'm glad they kind of went on the route that they did, and I hope they kind of stick they stick to it. And uh, I think the game looks great. So. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And, you know, I, I just realized, too, sort of looking at my notes, we're rounding out of, out of this press conference, which, you know, had had a fair number of games, but three of them are games that have appeared on our cover. We've got... Look at that. Uh, or Yeah, we've got the new the new Lara Croft, mm -hmm. uh, the new Tomb Raider. We've got Just Cause, Just Cause 3 and Deus Ex Mankind Divided. Which, which I'm is. super excited for. I loved Human Revolution. I know some it wasn't for everyone, but... Mm -hmm. <laughs> I really liked it. I yeah. mean, and it's, it seems it seems like they know the things that maybe didn't go totally right in mm -hmm. the last one. They've you know mentioned the boss um, battles and stuff before. Um, seems like they're really invested in creating a world with an interesting sort of story and well, setting to it. Right. That's the other thing I wonder about the ambition on that being like, oh, your story is going to play out di like how different will well, the story? Yeah, you know? and I think that that's something that especially you and I as are you know a lot big RPG gamers have just been so conditioned at this point to doubt because like they always say your choices will determine the fate choices of the world will and matter. Yeah, yeah. And often that just means that you're going to get a different like Cut piece of it. concept art with some text on it. Well, that's what I'm hoping what is they do. don't go the same yeah. route. I, I enjoyed the different endings to last game. I didn't like how they were presented. And so I hope even they're saying your actions are going to kind of lead to one or another. And I yeah. hope that means something because I didn't, it, at the end, it was pretty much just pick what you want yeah. and then get the text. So I'm hoping they have learned from that and they can, you know, really bounce off that and do something better. Yeah, like take a recent example, like The Witcher, where they were touting all oh, of, yeah. all well, of these different endings. Just for the ambition and, of all that, like yeah. that's what I want to see more in games. Is you know, I know it's a pain in the butt for them to have to write all that, and it's a lot more work, but it's a lot more satisfying as a gamer to feel like you are making your mark. And there's nothing wrong, too, with like a linear experience. I yeah. still love those. But if you're going to make that promise, make sure you deliver on it. I still have yet to play the game that really lives up to, to those, I think, what gamers have in their minds when developers promise that kind of reactivity. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe that's something we'll see mm -hmm. this generation. I don't know. So... With all of that stuff, mm -hmm. I mean, I think th we've got the the western side uh, also looking good. Yeah, um, I feel like I woke up this morning. I was just like, uh, nothing's going to really top anything from yesterday. <laughs> like, you know, Sony, I really like what Sony did. I thought Microsoft did a fabulous job, too. Mm -hmm. And then I come in today, and I'm just like, everything is just great. I mean, today <laughs> kind of catered more towards, like, my, you know... JRPG. Your, per your personal taste? Per personal taste, but even, yeah, like, yesterday, tons do, like... I don't know. I, as far as people know, I love my JRPGs, but I do play a little bit of everything. So yeah, it's there's true. like so much that I'm I'm excited for. Like as we were talking about, just how this show pumps you up, kind of for that. Like, oh man! But I think it was reassuring to see so many listed for 2016 and you know winter of fall this year. Like I just think like we're just gonna have a lot going on, and that's always a good thing as a gamer. I feel now we're seeing those games that are more devoted to PlayStation 4 and Xbox One and not feeling like they have to, you know, peel back for yeah. last generation. So I mean it's exciting time. Yeah. And, and Kim, I, how about them Kamibos? Gosh. <laughs> <Way>. <laughs> Hashtag Kamibos. 
Uh, don't forget to use it. Uh, a Camibo parade, parade uh, is how I read no, it. No, I think, I think part of what what's interesting. Part of what's interesting also is for a company like Square that, you know, over the last few years has sort of been perceived as maybe a little notoriously out of touch yeah, with how exactly. their franchises are being yeah. perceived and stuff. I think what we're seeing here is Square looking healthier than, healthier. It's, th- th- than it's looked in the past with a with a good slate of titles like not only coming in 2015, mm-hmm. things announced for 2016, mm-hmm. and still putting those like little carrots on a stick for you to look forward to even further and out I feel in the horizon. Like, too, they're more willing to kind of listen than they were before yeah, like before yeah. it felt like you couldn't really express it, fans would be like oh we've gotten we'll see you wait now it's like they really are looking at feedback for all their games which i just think is a big it seems like a big push now for, in a way that it never was before so well, i mean we'll see how much that plays in and how it turns out but i think final fantasy 15 is really their experiment with that yeah and kind of how these demo updates kind of help you know what their feedback is from that i mean they're already asking for feedback for kingdom hearts 3 so i mean let's keep yeah. the ball rolling yeah and so at this phase we haven't necessarily seen uh those labors bear all the fruit that they but possibly it's nice could to see them. but it's, it's a step in the right mm-hmm. it's definitely a step in the right direction so i think yeah i mean i think kim and i we we like what we saw from now we from just Square need Enix. a new dragon quest announcement so and then we'll be okay it's all here she gets a kingdom hearts trailer and all of this stuff and she still she still wants more yes as always well I'm greedy. What can yeah. I say? Well, that's going to do it for us and the uh, Square Enix Post Show. But thank you so much for watching mm-hmm. and for watching uh, our our other ones. This was our, our last big press conference of E3 2015. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah, keep an eye on the site for all of the big, you know, hands-on mm-hmm. previews and stuff from the show as uh, as the week goes on. And we will, uh, you know, we'll see you again.